what is up guys welcome back to my channel for those of you who are returning and welcome welcome to the new subscribers new viewers if you're new here please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell while you add it so that you get notified every time i drop new videos so today i'll be talking about four examinations that you can take that will give you a better chance or that will give you an advantage when applying for a software development role at a corporate enterprise or at a corporate company okay i'm just going to use software development as an umbrella term for you know like software for a software engineer like a tester um i'll just include devops even though it doesn't necessarily fall under software development but it is part of the software development cycle um so yeah so this is for anyone who's interested in all those three things that i just mentioned if you want to become a software engineer a uh, software tester um devops engineer um, so, okay, let me just give a brief explanation of what these three things are. So, a software developer is someone who writes code, who builds systems, right? So, this is the guy who does all the back end and the front end. So, yeah, you can break down a software engineer into two categories front end software developer and uh, back end software developer. Okay, next term. Um, software tester or just tester as we as we call them so this is a person that takes the code that the back-end developer writes and then they run automated tests based on specific scenarios there's different types of tests that are ran to make sure that the back-end code does whatever that it's meant to do and uh, the, the front-end code is also tested according to certain, to certain scenarios um, to you know uh, make sure that it, do it does everything that it needs to do and then all of, once all of that has been tested that is then um, given to someone who is a DevOps engineer um, so this is something I used to do um, at the company I'm currently I'm currently working at um, so what it, uh, the, the role of a DevOps engineer is to take the code that has been tested by the tester and then deploy it into an environment. Uh, by environment, I mean, um, so this will be, if let's say it's a, it's a back-end application. So this will be deployed to an environment that is built to support a back-end application. If it's a .NET application, so you would need to install all the, um, the runtime software that will, that will make sure that your application runs you need to install you know like whatever dependencies that your software might need so it's the job of a devops engineer to make sure that those things are present in that environment um and uh, and if it's front end you know like you need to install all of those things as well that a front end application would need um and yeah so, so that, that's what a devops engineer does basically they make sure that you know like the code that's written by a software engineer and tested by a tester runs in an environment where um, an end user can access the the website um, or if it's software they can just you know like be able to run the software okay enough with the explanations so these four exams i'm just going to break them into um let's say three categories right so the first category will be uh, cloud computing and then the second category will be operating system and then the third category will be automation right okay cool so under cloud um, computing uh, we'll have two certifications so the first certification will be AWS associate exam. Um, so AWS is the cloud offering by um, Amazon. Um, so AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, right? Um, so the associate exam is the entry level exam uh, for Amazon um, for, for for AWS, right? Um, so I'll just link in the in the description um, the the course outline. For that particular exam 
um, and the reason you need to learn um, cloud computing as a, as, a, as a software engineer or at least um, I think it's, it's very beneficial for someone as a soft, that is a software engineer to learn cloud computing is because first of all you need to understand exactly um, how your code runs in an environment and for you to be able to do that and if you're working in a in an in a corporate company or in a in an enterprise that um, that that, that uh, deals with a software that serves a lot of customers you need to be able to understand exactly what your code does um, and by doing that you stand an advantage um, over someone who doesn't who just writes code um, so when you're a software developer you're encouraged to learn AWS or um, Azure right mainly because once you write code, you need to understand that you are writing code for a specific environment and this is how the code is going to behave in that particular environment, right? So if you're just writing code blindly, not knowing exactly where it's going to be hosted and all of those things, you're just literally not going to understand the whole ecosystem of, you know, like how your software will work and how it will run and how you can improve performance and all of that, right? Um, so yeah, by learning AWS and uh, taking the associate, um, well, by, by writing the AWS associate exam, you'll then be equipped with the knowledge um, to know what is a load balancer, how does a load balancer work, how do you auto scale um, your software, how do you make sure that when there's more users that are logging into your system, how do you auto scale it without having to switch off your application, to make sure that you can cater for more people, right? Um, okay, so that's the AWS associate. So it will cover all of those things, load balancing, auto scaling, um, ingress, egress, like all of those things, right? Which is, which is, yeah, you, I'll just link it in the, in the link below. And then if you guys have any questions, you can just ask, ask away, right? Um, and then I'm gonna move on to the, to Azure, right? Um, so Azure is, exactly the same thing as AWS in terms of like the cloud computing part well it's cloud computing and it has like you know like other services with, with it, within it right but the, the main basic things that are covered in both these exams so so there's Azure fundamentals and there's Azure associate um, the same way um, Azure and Associate, but the entry level for Azure is Azure Fundamentals and they cover the fundamentals that are covered in AWS Associate, right? So you could say Azure um, Fundamentals is like on the same level as AWS Associate because they both cover the same thing. Um, what else? Okay guys, so that's it for the cloud computing segment right um but before you can decide on which um which uh certification to go with you need to know well like you need to you look you need to look at the company that you're going to be applying for and then you need to check what technology stack they're using if they're using aws you obviously want to go write the AWS exam. If they're using Azure, you then have to like go look at writing Azure. Uh, but I would, re I would recommend that you try and do both. Azure exams are actually relatively cheaper because like I think it's like a thousand something for, AWS, for Azure and then about 3,000 for AWS. I'm not 100% sure on the prices. I'll just put the link on the description for you guys to, to check. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next segment. The next segment is operating system, right? Um, but I only have one examination under operating system because I feel like this is the most important. Um, so in most corporate companies, um, the one operating system, well, maybe not the one operating system, but the one system that I personally have been working on um, as a DevOps engineer is Red Hat Enterprise, right? Um, so yeah, Red Hat Enterprise is it's a Linux operating system that is cat that is catered for uh, or that caters for uh, enterprise companies or corporate companies, right? 
Um, so yeah, the, the, there's an examination for it. Um, so if you want to become like a systems administrator, that's a, that's, that's a good place to start. But they obviously have like different levels for, for, these, uh, for this exam. Um, there's like an entry level one and then if you want to become more advanced you take more advanced exams right but I think the the entry level examination for Red Hat is enough for you to start playing around and actually learning how like the the, the Linux operating system works um, or you could even start with like something as simple as Ubuntu or like any other like um, Linux operating system just to familiarize yourself with the operating system and then once you're ready with that then you can start looking into Red Hat um, to be honest Red Hat is just more secure than all these other um, Linux systems or Unix systems right and it, it's obviously like ca uh, catering for uh, corporate companies uh, but yeah I would, I would recommend that you take that exam if you are if you're planning on becoming a a DevOps engineer because that's you know that's the operating system that corporate companies use. Um, so yeah, that puts you at an advantage. Um, yeah, so that's it for this segment, and then I'm gonna move on to the last segment. The last segment is all about automation, right? And I chose um, Ansible under automation. Um, so what Ansible is? It's a I don't know if I should say like a scripting. Okay, let me just say scripting. It's, it's a scripting language that is offered by Red Hat to automate um, the provisioning of servers, installation of software, um, just like a whole lot of jobs that you, you would uh, normally do like um, manually on a computer. And so what gives Where did you... the light come from now? It's always in my bag. And so what gives you what? An opportunity to run opportunity. different commands yeah, I'm looking for it. at the same time. I mean, uh, uh, one command on a lot of computers at once. Yeah, yeah. but, but that's how you for explain it. Is it, it an too. opportunity? <laughs> Ansible gives you the advantage. Yes, mm. the advantage. Okay, cool. Hello. <laughs> um, so, Ansible gives you the advantage of running multiple scripts across multiple computers. So let's say, for instance, you want to install an operating system across a thousand servers. You'd literally just run something called, you'd write something called a, a playbook. Um, you'd specify all the commands that you need to run. Um, so you can run this. The last time I checked, um, you could run it on Red Hat and Windows servers. I can't really remember exactly. I think there was a workaround for Windows servers because it's a it's it's you know it's it's an offering from uh, Red Hat or yeah it's an offering from Red Hat but anyway so that's Ansible for you and the reason this is really important and this is one examination that I, I personally wrote the exam and I'll say one thing for sure like that was the highest exam I've ever had to write in my whole life I failed dismally like I got like a twenty percent for that exam. Um, after having practice, like I, I literally, I used to be the one person in the company who used to write and some scripts. Uh, well, there used to be like maybe like three of us, but like I was the one person that was given the task to write and some scripts, right? And I knew, like I thought, I thought I knew everything to be honest. And then I just decided to get certified on Ansible because a lot of companies, like in South Africa, there's only probably like less than 100 people that have the certification and people just get hired as Ansible en like engineers to go write playbooks and all of that so I thought that was a dope opportunity and you know like I just wanted to go write the exam but that exam was hard guys um, I think at the time I paid about 4,800 grants um, I can't really remember but I'll just put I'll, I'll just put the link on the description for you guys to check it out yeah, I think it's if you really want to uh, specialize, well, maybe not specialize, but like if you want to learn how to automate all of those things, um, you, you can definitely go check out Ansible. Um, so that's that's for Red Hat, right? I know AWS has their own scripting um, language called Ter Terraform, um, or let me say like scripting technology. 
called Terraform. That's, uh, that's something you can also go, I'll just add it as a bonus. So this will be the fifth one, which is Terraform. But I don't know if um, Talk IT offers um, uh, Terraform. But yeah, I, I know for a fact that AWS has like a lot of information on that because that's what they use um, to, to, to spin up a lot of these things, a lot of their services. Okay, guys. Um, yeah, that's that, that's about it uh, with um, yeah with the, with the four examinations that I think you know would put you at, uh, would would give you an advantage uh, when applying for a job in a um, in a corporate company. Um, and the reason I'm saying advantage um, is because when you when you when you go write these exams. You need like hours and hours of training before you can actually pass these exams because these exams are accredited like you know like by international companies like so you can literally get all of these qualifications and you can work in a in in an you know like in an international company um they they like they they are it's like it's almost like having a degree from a renowned university you know like or a recognized university you can literally take it anywhere in the world and it'll be valid so that's what these uh, certificates give you and the nice thing about these certifications is that you literally the only thing that you need i think is metric well i don't even know if metric is a requirement i don't i doubt i doubt it's like a requirement per se but if, if you are able to write and register um, yeah, go ahead and register. Uh, you don't need a degree to take any of these examinations. You learn a lot, like you learn a lot. Um, and so, so all of these things that I just spoke about, all of these examinations that, that I just spoke about, they are available um, on Talk IT. So you can go check out Talk IT's website. Um, they have academies like um, I think they have one in Pretoria, one in Cape Town and one in Sentin. I think when I wrote, I went to the one in Sentin. Um, yeah, guys, so check out Talk IT. Um, they are the only people that I know of personally because I've, I've, I've dealt with them and this video is not sponsored or influenced by, you know, like by, by any of, of the guys at Talk IT. Uh, but yeah, definitely go check it out um, and let me know what you guys think. Uh, if there's anything that I've left out that you think is important, uh, please, Go ahead and, uh, and highlight that in the comments and then yeah we can just take it from there um, yeah guys so as I said before this is based on my experience um, and I'm sure other people have different experiences and I'm not saying these exams are silver bullets um, and they're, they're guaranteed to give you um, you know to get your job but I know for, for a fact that you'll stand a better chance than just having a degree straight out of university. Um, so yeah guys, so that's it from me and I hope this video was informative and valuable. If you did make it this far, please go ahead and hit that like button and if you are not subscribed, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, yeah, that's it from you guys, I'll check you later.